So I, I'm a clinical neuropsychologist, and I spend a good part of my time involved involved in testing and, and assessing kids who have kids and teenagers and young adults who have learning disabilities or attention problems or neurological problems, emotional behavioral problems, and trying to figure out what's working well, not what's not working well, and how to help them. Uh, I, I lecture and, and write a lot about the effects of stress on the developing brain. I think there's a lot of interest in this idea that, that the adolescent brain is very underdeveloped. It's, it's, not, it's, it's very unlike an adult brain. The interesting thing about that is, is that it has all kinds of potential for development. And at the same time, developing brain systems are more vulnerable. You know, the, the, the developing brain is more uh, vulnerable to various chemicals or to in injury, accident, various things. And so there's all these things in, our, in, in modern life that have a terrible effect on the developing brain, including drugs and alcohol and adolescents, including the chronic sleep deprivation that we see in teenagers, uh, in, including the chronic stress that we see affecting both kids in elite schools who w want to be top students and go to elite college, and kids, kids in the most poorest, in the poorest and most poverty-stricken schools, where kids' stress levels are, are three times what they are in, in the general population. And we know that when you get stressed, what happens is the parts of the brain that allow you to think clearly basically get shut down. Because in a real emergency, if you're being attacked, you don't want to stop and think. If you overthink, that's dangerous. So nature's programmed us so that, that when we start to feel stressed, which means that we start to feel threatened or, or we feel, start to feel that we could be embarrassed or hurt or we're behind on something, we're worried about something. When we start to feel stressed, we're supposed to respond instinctively, which means that we can't think clearly. We can't organize our thinking. We, we, we can't uh, put things in perspective. And so it, it's a very dangerous situation for, for kids and teenagers to be trying to learn and trying to, to develop, to, to sculpt brains that work well, that can see things in perspective, that have a big picture on life, that, that, that have a positive attitude, that can be optimistic if they're stressed and tired all the time because the brain doesn't work that way. In my experience, transcendental meditation is really good for the developing brain. I, I talk about transcendental meditation because in my experience, that teenagers can do it very easily, and when they do it, when they do it in just 10 minutes twice a day, what they experience is that they actually have, they have a center, they have a core of peacefulness and happiness inside them that they can access. And the more they do it, the more they find that they're less reactive to stress. When they do get stressed, it goes away faster. They generally sleep better, they find it easier to eat and get through life. And these kids simply need antidotes to these tremendous things, these stressors, um, in, in, including the, the drugs and alcohol and sleep deprivation. Like everybody else, I'm also really concerned about this epidemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes uh, in, in kids, and in, including quite young kids now. And uh, that, that in, in trying to think about these problems that, that people over the years have focused on, on, on diet and exercise. So for children, that, that, that means uh, nutritional education and uh, hopefully some kind of exercise. And yet, despite all this big emphasis on diet and exercise, people just keep getting fatter and fatter, including uh, younger and younger kids. And the current thinking is that a lot of this may be related to the fact that, that they're just so tired. And we know from research in adolescence that, that TM significantly uh, reduces the, the risk for type 2 diabetes, that, that stress plays a big role in obesity, and, and, and so that by giving the nervous system rest, by de-stressing, de-stressing kids, I think that we also significantly reduce their risk for heart-related problems, for obesity-related problems. And you know, there's, I, I just read a study a couple of years ago that found that if you effectively treat blood pressure in adults, you lower the risk of dementia by 50%. And it, it, which it makes sense in terms of you get better blood flow to the brain. And there, there's, there's good evidence that, that transcendental meditation, by, by providing a, a tool for systematically de-stressing, allows the heart to work better 
And if the heart works better, the brain works better. And it makes kids at less risk for having all manner of stress-related physical problems and stress-related brain problems as they get older. In, in my lecturing and my writing at this time, what I'm arguing is that our, our top priority in, in educating kids should be creating environments that aren't unduly stressful to be in and helping kids develop brains that function at a high level of efficiency. And much more important than, than what they're taught, what they know, is really having brains that, 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 that work in a healthy way and being in an environment in which kids feel safe. And I think that if we think about what, what are the real dangers of, of, as kids get older, particularly they grow into adolescence, what are the real dangers? And th there are things like kids making bad decisions, kids losing motivation, kids getting depressed, kids, kids developing eating disorders or, or self-injury, really worrisome things, uh, kids abusing drugs or alcohol, all these things are highly related to stress. And if we see transcendental meditation correctly as a, a beautiful tool and a very easy uh, tool to use to, for normalizing the stress response, providing deeper rest, all these things get better. You significantly, kids who are less stressed are significantly less likely to get depressed. They're significantly less likely to use drugs or alcohol, to cut themselves, to burn themselves, all the other things that we worry as kids get older can go wrong. And, and my feeling is that there's nothing more important than helping kids develop nervous systems that work well, that can learn well, and that feel good.